Today marks the 90th anniversary of the barnes hecker mining tragedy that left 132 children fatherless and 42 women husbandless. A core group of descendants and local historians spent the better part of the last few months organizing events in honor of those that survived the fallen miners by unraveling a long and sad history. ABC 10's Chelsea Birdsall takes a look at that group and what motivated them to put together the commemorative events in this week's ABC 10 feature. The outpouring of, of, of support for this from, from not only the families, but also uh, the, the people in this community has been nothing short of phenomenal. The idea to honor the legendary mining tragedy on its anniversary initially came out of the program planning for the Marquette Regional History Center. Jim Paquette, who is the president of the History Center's board, thought it was a service greatly needed for the community, which has a strong familial tie to the 1926 disaster. This idea eventually morphed into Paquette's presentation entitled, Miners Died and Widows Cried, Death in the Iron Ore Mines which was given at the UP History Conference in Munising this year. The presentation focused on the deaths and serious injuries that occurred on the Marquette Iron Range, including the barnes hecker accident. As Paquette was preparing, Mary Tippett, a descendant of the sole survivor of the tragedy and two of the victims, offered her family's photos and stories. As from this partnership, they created the barnes hecker Remembrance Committee, headed by Tippett and Paquette. The goal was to not only bring awareness of the anniversary to a local level, but to pay tribute to every miner who has died on the Marquette Iron Range. That's one of the things that we brought forth in the, in the, in the celebration of life, I guess, of those people. Even though it's a, it's a sad event, we, we, we want to celebrate the lives of, the, of those miners, but also the families and remember the things they went through. Historians from the Michigan Iron Industry Museum, Cliff Schaff Mine Museum, and the Marquette Regional History Center pitched in their knowledge and artifacts. But the community outreach that supplied committee members with real stories and photo albums was a tremendous help in piecing the story together. Everyone has brought in their heart and their knowledge and their connections. We've ended up finding people who have connected with other family members that they didn't know. The group has seen full capacity turnout at the two events that were held prior to the anniversary. Tippett says she hopes holding these commemorative events will inspire the younger generation to talk with their parents and grandparents about their family history. And knowing that it's been 90 years and knowing that the people of my generation would have the most knowledge from family, if we didn't do an, an observance this year, then my children, my grandchildren, other people's children and grandchildren would say, yeah, we know that happened a long time ago, but we're not really sure. Though this accident is close to a century old, the threat of deaths and injuries still linger in the minds of the families that send their loved ones out to the mines each and every day. For those iron ore miners that work there today has been the most important thing there always was. And that is that you got to make it home at the end of the shift because there's someone waiting for you at home. Today has been proclaimed as barnes Hecker Remembrance Day by several townships within the county, along with the county itself. In addition, several local churches rang their bells at 11.20 a.m. this morning, 51 times in honor of each of the miners who died in the cave-in. Reporting from Ishming for ABC 10 in the CW5, I'm Chelsea Birdsall.